some might say, Katie, it's very easy to just print. You know, you can go to your local library, go to uh, someplace else, and just print out new papers. But these are the originals. I personally don't like to erase history. And even if that history is a little bit uh, worn and torn, we're going to go with it. This is really hard to do one-handed. Hang on, I'll be right back. I don't have a lot of room to spin. I don't know how I used to do this. Oh, actually, this is fine. Hi, my name is Katie. And after seeing Wicked's reopening, I can definitely say that I have been changed for good. When I meet the wizard, I want to prove my words. You know, the month was April, the year 2019. And I was seeing a little flick called Avengers Endgame. The experience of seeing that, I mean, you've all seen the videos. There's all the videos of uh, opening night of Avengers Endgame. Like I was in one of those theaters. I saw it at my college. It was just a whole theater full of college kids seeing Avengers Endgame. The energy was crazy. Just like spoilers for Avengers Endgame, skip ahead like 10 seconds. Just like when the when the magic Doctor Strange circles came up and the um, Spider-Man and it really sounds like I didn't see this movie. I saw this movie. It's just the night was like incredible. And I always think back to the night and I'm like, I am never going to experience anything like this ever again in my entire life until Marvel makes another movie like this and I go to another opening night. And then I saw Wicked on Broadway on its reopening night, its first show back after being closed for over a year due to a pandemic. I don't know if you knew there was a pandemic. We're still in it, actually. For starters, I have never been in a room where there was so much green and pink. Everyone was dressed in green and pink. My friend Jamie and I, we went together. We walked in and we like looked down at ourselves not wearing green and pink and we're like, oh, we missed the dress code announcement. Outside the theater, there was like multiple like camera crews set up like people like I'm sure like Broadway.com was there, Playbill was there, Theater Mania, whoever the people are, they were all there. I started to do this thing where I was like walking around like kind of nearby the cameras and I would just like start um, saying things like, oh my God, I heard that Jeremy Jordan is going to be in the Urinetown revival. That actually wouldn't be bad. Actually, no, he's probably too good looking to be Bobby Strong. That didn't stop Little Shop, though, so keep it in mind. Anyway, I was just like walking around, like trying to like spread rumors to see if like someone would pick it up. But I have yet to see a headline that says that Derek Lena will be playing Charlie Brown in the You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown revival. So I guess it didn't work. They had these. I don't even know if they were selling them at the theater, but there were some people walking around with um, alphabet masks, which were essentially, I'll put a picture up on the screen, horrifying. <laughs> these green masks with like her mouth on it. But it was, they really looked like the, like some version of the Joker from the movie Joker. Awful. Did not like those. But hey better that mask than no mask so good job people so first off we're in our seats the energy is immaculate and then we hear ladies and gentlemen the room erupts it, you you would think that the announcer just said everyone in this room just won 10 million dollars and a car i don't know why i added a car to the end of that 10 million dollars can buy you so many cars this goes on for minutes finally i don't even think i heard him say this i think jamie heard him is the same announcer this was apparently supposed to be like one long announcement i think everyone else just thought it was like the regular like please silence your cell phones so ladies and gentlemen silence as everyone's cheering for like solid minutes and then the announcer just goes Chris and Chenoweth. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know what he said. I didn't hear because everyone was still cheering pretty loud. Chris and Chenoweth, the original Glinda from Broadway, comes out on stage. She is the moment. I was not ready to see her. I was not emotionally prepared. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's just in a silly, goofy mood. And she is so sweet. And she comes out and she says, there's no place like home. I just realized, how long has my pinky been up like this? Why am I doing this? Like I'm at a tea party. Stop that. So she gives a cute little speech. It's very lovely. She talks about how this is her favorite show and what everything has done for her. And she loves all the people here. Uh, yeah. So then she goes back out backstage. And listen, as you will see in this video, I did take some video throughout the course of this show. Is taking video during a Broadway performance usually frowned upon? Yes. Did I hear the announcer specifically say that? No. Because everyone was cheering so loud, I literally could not hear the speech. Should the rule be that if you don't hear it, it didn't happen? Perhaps. Hmm. Okay, thank you so much. So I actually just got word because it was such a historical night. It's actually legal for me to record during a show because I was documenting a historical event as a journalist because I went to journalism school and that legally makes me a journalist. So please don't get mad at me. <laughs> so current speech happens. We don't hear it. Everyone's cheering too loud. Music starts. Everyone's still going bananas. <laughs> And 
Yeah. yeah, and I mean that's pretty much like par for the course for the whole show. Like it, it was, it was really almost nonstop. Obviously, there were like pauses. Like no one was cheering during sentimental man <laughs> no one was cheering during was the other wizard song the wonder wonderful is it just called wonderful yeah no one's cheering during wonderful <laughs> i mean like he was the, the guy playing the wizard the guy playing the wizard was great it's just not this the song that you like cheer during <laughs> no one was cheering during like i'm not that girl either they, they cheer at the end but no one was cheering during so it, it's not nothing personal for the wizard but yeah but more or less a lot of cheering throughout so just like getting that out of the way our first big moment and this was something that if you're on theater twitter and honestly any theater social media platform I'm sure everyone was talking about it as soon as it was announced that Wicked was going to be you know reopening back on Broadway probably even before that honestly people have been saying oh my god that moment when Glinda comes down in her bubble and then she says it's so good to see me isn't it is that the line it's great to see me isn't it it's so it's good to see me isn't it but you'll hear it they're like ah oh, to be there to hear that happen after over a year of not being in a Broadway theater having Glinda be like it's it's good to see me, isn't it? Ugh. You could just feel like the energy in the room, like everyone was waiting, waiting for Glinda to say, it's good to see me, isn't it? That. Before she can even say the line, like her first appearance, everyone is going wild. Like the applause goes on forever. I like, talk about that night I I have no sense of time it feels like I'm in a timeless void the only time it didn't feel like a timeless void the only time I was actually paying attention to the time was when the applause after ladies and gentlemen was going on for so long that I turned to Jamie and I was like you know how we told the guy at the parking place that we parked the car at that we'd be back by 10 maybe we should have said 11. <laughs> so Glinda comes down in a bubble dog. Everyone is on their feet already. She hasn't even spoken yet. And everyone is losing their minds to the point where, and I think you can hear this in the video I'm about to play. I'm like, let her speak. And then she says the line. And the show proceeds, a lot more applause, a lot more cheers. There's like the moment where they bring out Baby Elphaba, which is like this little green like baby doll. And there's like, the baby is unnaturally green. And people have cheered for the green baby. <laughs> they cheered for the green baby. They cheered more for the green baby than uh, some of the actors. <laughs> Oh my God. Dream role is green baby, honestly. And then of course, Alphabet's first real appearance as a full grown adult and not a green baby um, also got a ton of applause. The audience was very like respectful. Like everyone was cheering, cheering, cheering. But like when things were happening, then everyone would pull it together. Because also everyone knows the show so well that they know when they need to shut up, which we'll see an example of that very soon. So Wizard and I starts, Elphaba's singing, she's great. Everyone was really great. One thing with Wizard and I is that there's like verses. So she's like, when I make the wizard, I want to prove my words, you know. And then there's a little musical interlude and then another verse and another. So this is what I'm talking about with how people know the show so well is that the verse would finish, there would be a little musical interlude and people would start cheering and applauding. The next verse would start, Everyone shuts up. All right, so we're gonna go through this video I have of uh, The Wizard and I, cause there's a lot here. So a lot of cheering just throughout the song. <laughs> For when people see me, they will scream. You can hear a guy actually like yell so loud. <laughs> He's like, yeah! I felt like I was at a sports event. I was just cheering like I had just watched Elphaba score a touchdown. I also want to take this moment to apologize. The sound that's like sounds like a duck is being strangled to death, that's me. But this is another example because she hits team, right? And everyone's cheering and then they shut up because we know what's coming next and we want to hear it. Oh, this is my favorite. Watch this guy at the end. Yeah! <laughs> I love that guy every time I see that video. He's like, Elphaba! Yeah, Elphaba, fight the power! <laughs> it's great. So obviously, standing ovation for Wizard and I. So the show proceeds. Obviously, I didn't film the whole thing. I was just, you know, getting clips that I knew were going to be iconic. So rest of Act 1 went kind of similar. Certain songs, certain lines, certain things that people were just like losing their minds over. Dancing through life. Everyone went bananas. And then we get to Defying Gravity. <laughs> Yeah. 
any time like a riff was added again it was like watching I'm really struggling for my words here I'm playing fantasy football right now but I truly don't know that much it was like the kicker kicked the ball and it went through the goalpost. god I'm so smart I know sports so well it's almost like it's like pulling back like the bowstring when you're about to shoot an arrow it's like the tension is just like growing and growing and growing and growing and like she's about to pop off Again, me screaming like I just watched someone do like 10 flips off of you know what? I don't need a metaphor for that. It was appro- it was appropriate screaming for what I was witnessing. So, you know, cheerings are rising, cheerings are rising. But again, right before the big, big one, everyone shuts up. Like the cheering dies off so fast. It is silent. And she holds the silence for like an extra split second. And then she gives us. It's great to be back. That was act one, act two, great. I'm not here to review the show. I'm here to talk about the audience and the energy in that room, which was, okay, we need to talk about No Good Deed. So if you don't know, No Good Deed is a song in Wicked, and there's a moment where she sings the name Fiero, a couple times actually. But the second time is a very iconic belt to the point that there are actually compilations that you can find on YouTube of different alphabas singing this note and adding their own opt-ups, riffs, what have you. The original is like, Fiero, and then there's like, Fiero, and it's like, Fiero, or Fiero. There's a lot. Go watch the compilations. They're very fun. So everyone, again, the theater's quiet because we all know what's happening and we're all ready and waiting to hear what she does. So she hits the note. I'm going to tell you, like, so you can watch. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. She hits the note and it's the normal Fiero. So everyone still cheers because, like, that's so fun. That's so great. Like, that, yeah, okay, that's, like, the traditional note. But, like, that's great. We still love it. And then she goes for the opt-up. Those are basically all the videos I had. Like I said, I wasn't, you know, trying to record the whole show. I just wanted to get those iconic moments because I am legally a journalist. (laughs) One thing that I didn't record that was a really great moment that I was thinking about as it was coming that I felt like, again, if you know the show, you could tell when these moments were going to happen. Like you could feel it in the crowd. You could predict it easily. The moment that I didn't capture was at the end of As Long As Your Mind. As Long As Your Mind? Is that what I just said? No. As Long As Your Mind. He's like what is wrong or what are you thinking about? But I guess I don't know this show that well. <laughs> I can't get any of these lines right. He's like, Elphaba, what's up? And she goes, for the first time, I feel wicked, which is like the name of the show. And I, I like, I like, when I realized it was coming, I was like, oh my God, everyone's gonna lose their minds. And they did. It was, everyone was like, oh my God, she said the name of the show. Ah, standing ovation, probably. I don't remember, but yeah, everyone went wild. Oh, another moment of act two that I didn't capture. At the end, Glinda says something along the lines of like, we've been through some difficult times we've been through some hard times that kind of thing and like it wasn't a cheer you could just hear like the air leaving people (laughs) like it was just they were a little like it wasn't like one unified response like all the cheers were you just heard like smattered around the theater just like people having like a very strong emotional reaction to that line it wasn't like a sound that we all created together but it was like a feeling that we all experience together (laughs) anyway the show ends bow start everyone's losing their minds cheering on their feet curtain lowers the cheering goes on for minutes and minutes and minutes i could not say again i'm really bad at keeping track of time might have been five minutes might have been 10 minutes it was a long time then the curtain rises again cast comes back out and then jamie who's sitting next to me and she's like taller than me so she can see a lot better than i can she just goes is that Steven Schwartz? And I was like, hello, what? And it was Steven Schwartz. And he came out. Uh, Steven Schwartz uh, wrote, wrote it. Wrote it? Did he just do? I don't know how much of it he wrote. He did the music and the book. Not the book. Just the music. Just the music. Yeah. Yeah. Just the music. Just the music. Thank you, Editor Katie. You're welcome. So that was really cool to see old Steven. And um, there was a moment that I don't really know what was happening. That like, it looked like they were trying to like push him out to take his own bow. They had already been out for a while, but they were like, yeah, let's go take a bow, Steven. Just as they started lowering the curtain back down again. So it just looked like they were sacrificing Steven Shore. Um, and then they realized what was happening and they pulled him back again. <laughs> Oh, 
again. And that was it. That was the whole night. And then we left and we were just, oh my God, our hearts were fluttering. Our brains were buzzing. The energy was just immaculate. And it was a wonderful night. And I goes right up next to Endgame for me. It was truly special. And I very much enjoyed it. And I hope to see more theater soon. I don't know why I said that I'm literally seeing Come From Away next week. But I hope that everyone can safely experience some theater soon. Thank you so much for watching. It is good to be back with the Independent Study. I actually was considering bringing it back. And then when I went to see Wicked and I had this like whole story, I was like, oh, this is like a perfect, you know, Independent Study. So um, I would like to, you know, come back with it um, if anyone has any ideas drop them below you can do that thank you so much for watching the independent study i don't remember how i ended these what do like and subscribe i guess um ring that bell what do people say follow me on tiktok <laughs> okay thanks for watching bye oh live your life like and subscribe or don't live your life I remembered. I remembered. How did I forget that? Wow. Okay. Bye. <laughs>